Welcome back to The Herd. Joy Taylor in for Colin Cowherd. Alex Curry in for Jason McIntyre. They will be back next week. We're in with you today and tomorrow. And I'm very excited to have Melissa Rowland in studio. I love having Melissa in studio, our Fox Sports NBA reporter. It was a very juicy interview coming out very soon, which we'll get to in just a little bit. But thanks for joining us, Melissa. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Joy. We love having you in studio. And we're coming to the end of the NBA season. It's been an interesting season. Most of the focus has been on the Western Conference, at least through the second half of the season, and uh, which is kind of ironic because all the teams that we trust are in the Eastern <laughs> Conference. Uh, but we'll start last night with the Lakers. Disappointing loss for the Lakers. If you wanted to secure the fifth spot, you could argue that they avoided the Suns, so maybe it was, in the end, the best thing for, to happen for them. But I was surprised that AD and LeBron played. Were you surprised at how they looked, and how do you feel about them going forward? Is this like the start of the gloom and doom, or it's just a back-to-back -back and they played in an overnight, uh, overtime game the night before? Exactly. I was not surprised by how they looked at all. They're both, you know, struggling with nicks and aches and bruises at this point in the season. They were coming off of a back-to-back -back that went to overtime. Uh, meanwhile, the Clippers hadn't played since Saturday, so they were super fresh. So LeBron didn't even get his legs under him till the second half. Yeah. And the Clippers always get up for this game. This is actually a really tough game for the Lakers. The Clippers are 11 and 0 against the Lakers. 11 and 0 dating back to 2020. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. And then you add Russell Westbrook and all of the drama there, and he showed up for this game, Joy. I mean, he set the tone from the get-go, and the Lakers just couldn't really catch up. Their defense was a bit behind. They allowed way too much three-point shooting. But this is by no means gloom and doom for them. They were coming off of a four-game win, win streak. They had won seven of their last eight. They finally have put together um, a team that I think actually could go far in the playoffs. So this was just an exhaustion game. But I, I think they could do really well. So I really only trust three teams in the West and I'm, you know, I'm being a little scary and cheesy with it, but they're the teams that I've seen do it before. I, I, I don't know what the Nuggets are going to do. They put up, you know, they win games, but like in the postseason, are we going to do that? I don't know what to make of the Kings. It feels like a Cinderella story. Nobody trusts them. Memphis is very productive, but still Memphis. I just have questions about it. And, and the Clippers. Like, if the Clippers played the Lakers all the way through the playoffs, yeah, then they'd then have maybe, a chance. But, yeah. like, I don't, it's still the Clippers. And, you know, maybe that's a weak analysis, but that's just – that's where I'm at. I've seen LeBron James do this. I've seen Anthony Davis win a championship. I have seen the Warriors do it every which way. And I've seen Kevin Durant do it. I haven't seen the Suns go all the way and win it, but I've seen Kevin Durant do it, and I've seen the Suns get to the finals. So those are my three teams that I trust. And, yes, I understand. I'm not being very edgy with that. Is there anyone else? <laughs> I, I would think that you agree because you had the Lakers in there. I'm assuming that you have some confidence in the Suns and the Warriors. Not... Those are my three teams as well. Okay, yeah, so yes. no hot takes yet. If you had to put someone else, another team, which we probably should, hmm. in that – let's just fourth. You don't have to go any further than that. Just okay. one more team – that you would have to put your money on. You've got to spread it around the four teams. Who else would you put into that? If the Clippers can get past the first round without Paul George, and Paul George makes a return in the second round and looks good, the Clippers could be really good. I mean, we're still waiting for it to happen. This is a team that, until 2021, had never made it past the second round of the playoffs, mm -hmm. even. And then they make it to the Western Conference Finals. They collapse. But... This is a team that was supposed to go far, and they just haven't met expectations yet. And this seems like either they go and make a big splash, make a deep playoff run, or things are really going to change. I don't know if that means um, the roster is going to be blown up a little bit. I don't know if that means there's going to be a lot of pressure to make a coaching change. And it's really unfortunate because I think Ty Lue is an incredible coach. I, I think uh, the Clippers have a great roster. But for whatever reason, they just are never able to get it together in the postseason. But if I have to put another team in that fourth spot, I'm going to go with them, Joy. I want to. I want to so badly. Yeah. There's so much I love about the Clippers, except for that that name. <laughs> and it's no disrespect to the Clippers. I love Clipper Daryl, but I'm like, <laughs> I just it's I just gotta see them do it. So I'll get into my MVP full take a little bit later, but I'll I'll sprinkle it on you right now. I want to know who your MVP is. My MVP is Joel Embiid. Again, I'm giving you weak analysis on this as well. I just want to see Joel Embiid win the MVP. I don't know what else he has to do. I understand it is splitting hairs between Jokic, Giannis, and Joel Embiid. Mm -hmm. Any of these three men are fully deserving of being the MVP. 
I think it will depend on which way the voters sway. But that's also why maybe it's not that weak of analysis because we change the criteria every single time for the MVP. So who is your MVP and why is it Joel Embiid? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a, a couple wrong answers here. Yeah. Um, so I actually am a voter, okay, and okay. I am voting for Embiid as well. Okay, and I'm not just saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't convince our guys. Um, I think he deserves it as well. Um, not only has he led the league in scoring this season, but he's been a beast on the defensive end. I think he was already playing at such a high level, entered this season, and he even took his game to another level, kept the 76ers as a top three seed. Um, I do think that the ultimate question comes down to what else does he need to do? And then you have that recent 50 plus point 13 rebound performance. Yeah. I mean, Joel has proven time and time again that he's best player on the court on any given night in that matchup against Joker. He was hands down dominant. I know he got a lot of criticism for missing that second matchup in Denver. Um, I mean, I'm a big fan that too much emphasis obviously can never be placed upon one game. This is an award that's predicated upon an 82 game season. But right. um, so I don't think he should be dock points there. But I think Embiid has put forward a body of work that undeniably makes him the MVP. And this is in a really tough race, obviously, Joker, Giannis, they're both incredible, but I think Embiid has edged them out. So you have an interview with Kevin Durant coming out very soon. Uh, I am a huge KD fan. I'm very excited that he's with the Suns. I'm very excited to watch them in the postseason. I hate the criticism of Kevin Durant, and I think that the narrative is very, very silly. But give us a little, a few little tidbits don't reveal everything. Okay. But just a little sneak peek of something that you got from, from the interview with KD. Well, it's funny you say that, Joy, because one of the main things that I talked about with him, I asked him about the whole narrative of him being sensitive. And I think there's a lot of hypocrisy there because we ask athletes to be forthcoming and to be vulnerable and to be honest. And then when they are, oftentimes we completely kill them. And I think KD is a really good example of that. Um, nobody ever... Uh, criticizes his play on the court. Right. He never gets in trouble off of the court. Right. And he said to me, you know, if the biggest thing that you can say about me, if the biggest criticism that you have about me is that I've made a couple of tweets that you don't like, then I'm pretty proud of my career. So I thought that was really interesting. He talked a lot about the whole sensitivity narrative, got really in depth with it with me. So I'm really excited to share that on foxsports.com. And then another thing that was really interesting that I talked to him about, obviously when he joined the Warriors, he got so much criticism. When he left the Warriors, he got so much criticism. <laughs> right. uh, he won two championships over there, two-time finals MVP. They wouldn't have won those championships if it hadn't been for KD. Absolutely not. Yet, when he left the team, he struggled in Brooklyn, obviously. Now he's with the Suns. Um, and I asked him if he ever had any regret over leaving the Warriors. And you can read that more. Ah, <laughs> there he goes. There I know, go. right? Okay, make sure you follow Melissa <laughs> on social media as well at Melissa Roland. And of course, when that drops on FoxSports.com, I'm sure we will be quoting it everywhere as well. So it sounds like that's a very good tease. That's what the, we in the biz call a tease. Um, I, I love that. I actually, I mean, I, I like I said, I'm a KD fan. I think it's very silly. The, the way that we assess what Kevin Durant is, I would also agree with the sensitivity thing. So what, first of all, when did becoming, when did being sensitive become a bad thing? Yeah, why is that a bad, bad thing? Why is that a bad thing that you care about what, I mean, I, I think there's a point where you shouldn't care about what people say about you. Obviously you don't want to be unreasonable, mm -hmm. but if you're being unfairly criticized or overly criticized or to your point, you get criticism when you go there and you win and you're the best player and you're the reason why they win those championships. And then you get criticized when they leave. You can't win. And that's why I'm really interested in this particular run with KD because what, what's the narrative going to be after this one? Exactly. Yeah, I think the Suns have a really good chance to win it this season. And this season very much feels to me like it's championship or bust. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially because you have, you have an aging Chris Paul you have a, you have like the roster right now and they're winning. So you want all this to come together mm -hmm. and, and, you know, cultivate in, into a championship. It would be an amazing run. And I would love to hear from KD after the, if that ends up happening. We love having Melissa Rowland in, in studio, Fox Sports NBA reporter. Follow her at Melissa Rowland. And it sounds like she has a spicy interview coming out very <laughs> soon with Kevin Durant. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.